Yeah, I, I want to make a video about this because I do think that this is actually pretty important. And I do just want to talk to my YouTube frogs about this. Because I, I know Twitch chat, you already know that at twitch.tv forward slash techdown, which is, if this is a video, you can come here and follow and ask questions for yourself. But I kind of want to talk about the state of Honkai Star Rail, the state of Genshin Impact, and kind of like the state of everything, and kind of just give you guys a, what am I thinking about everything that I'm doing? What's been going on with the drama as of late? What's been going on with other content creators? And uh, pretty much give you guys another Q&A section, specifically about my career, my thoughts on Gotcha, and how I feel about other people. And I do want to start off with this. Okay, Genshin Impact 4.5, uh, I put out a title the other day where I said it looks insane. That's obviously just a joke uh, about Doro. I thought it was funny. He didn't think it was funny at first, but then he came around to it and he got it, which, which I'm glad. I like being able to have banter with the people who I respect in the community. And Doro is one of those guys who I really like. And I respect a lot the guy's able to be positive in such a horrible, horrible, horrible game state for the game that he plays. But it is what it is. Some people are stronger than me, and I I understand Doro's very good at uh, seeing the light in the dark. It's like a Darman video. Anyways, yeah, 4.5 sucks balls. I have zero plans to go back to it. I might go back to it as a meme because the cat gameplay looks funny. I will be real. I have no idea what Genshin Impact players have been doing for the past six weeks. Uh, not even the past 12 weeks. I don't know what they're going to do for the next eight weeks, which is when the earliest 4.6 will come out where maybe we get a story quest and maybe people will think that it's insane. Uh, I, I don't know about any of that. Uh, also, the new weapon banner system and character summoning system is terrible and any content creator who's telling you that it's good is just simply wrong they didn't research it they saw their add audience getting excited about it and then they piggybacked off their excitement and attempted to farm positivity the new weapon banner system is a joke uh the new character banner system is a joke they had an opportunity to fix it and that's what i think that they're going to do i think they intentionally by design released a horrible new wishing system uh that can be easily fixed by changing it from being intertwined fate to just regular what is it called stellar fates from limited wishes to standard wishes is how they make that banner good uh that's the only way they make it good if they don't do that then it's terrible and i'm thinking that hoyoverse wanted to once again release something that was bad uh, get players outraged, and then they'll fix it to make them think that, oh, look, we really have our fingers on the pulse. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, the new wishing system is a joke. If you said 4.5 looks good because of that, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand the principles of the game, and your opinion does not matter. And the worst thing is the hitty resets, which is going to force FOMO even more so and force players to lose even more currency that they should have already been saving for other things to make them enjoy the game. It's a terrible system made by a terrible dev team. 4.5 looks awful. And let's continue on from there. Uh, I want to talk about Honkai Star Rail. 2.0 has been great. It's been very good. 2.1 is looking like it's shaping up to be another amazing patch. Black Swan has been an amazing addition to the roster. Misha is a dumb piece of shit. And Hanabi, aka Sparkle, have also... Sparkle's been a great addition to, this, to the uh, roster as well. Very happy with their design team. What I'm more so happy with than anything is their marketing team lately. Uh, their Sparkle trailer knocked it out of the park. Genuinely. Genuinely. That trailer was so good, it broke the normie barrier. And people who don't even play Honkai Star Rail, I showed that trailer to, and they were interested in trying the game just for that trailer. So as far as marketing goes, I feel like Honkai Star Rail has been doing an amazing job. As far as content creator goes and the fallout of what's happened with Atsu and Enviosity, uh, Enviosity is still being used as pretty much the global dislike button. And every single comment on his YouTube channel is just him being called a mint picker. And he has to have a one month follow only mode enabled on his Twitch chat. So things are definitely, uh, you know, I mean, he kind of reaped what he sowed there. Uh, that's still happening. And then Atsu successfully diverted the attention from everybody calling him out on his misactions, which is this uh, mysterious third person who caused all of the issues and it's just simply not true i even know who the third person is atsu didn't even meet the guy till after he met brax and if that's the case then why was brax and atsu's first conversation so weird because he said that it was because the third person he thought he was so weird but then conveniently just fails to mention that that person didn't tell them the things that she said until after they'd already met so that's also just complete bullshit but people i mean good job to atsu he's once again manipulated his youtube audience into thinking that he's a 
wholesome person. And then, then there you go. Is what it is, you know? I mean, good job. I mean, I told everybody he was going to do it. He was going to get away with the bullshit. He was going to get people to think that he was wholesome. And he was going to make dumb to actually fall for his shit. But, uh, I mean, there you go. Congratulations. Community manipulated. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. Uh, I mean, yeah, imagine that. Atsu lying again. Actually a shock. Uh, let's move forward from that. Brax has been killing it lately on stream. Viewership's been going really well. I mean, he got a massive dub uh, from the uh, drama, as well as creators like Mr. Pokey got a massive dub from the drama because uh, now people are looking for new waters to support and cherish. And uh, I will say this, I think the gotcha community is the best it's ever been. I do. I genuinely think that. I feel like there are more creators who are on the up and coming because now this established click that was these group of like eight content creators that had like a little friend group. Well, all of them have kind of like disappeared. They don't really like make content anymore. And a lot of them are ashamed of what happened. And uh, now a lot of new content creators are stepping up to the plate. And a lot of their channels are doing great. And even my channel has been doing fantastic. Uh, I've been getting more subscribers than I've ever gotten since pretty much COVID era. And my viewership is pretty much similar to the COVID era as well. Uh, so my channel has been killing it on YouTube and Twitch. And it's been going very, very, very well. And uh, even my variety numbers are also doing really good for content that's not just gotcha gaming related. It feels very good. I feel like people kind of understand the bullshit that I dealt with and uh, being able to clear my name felt very good. Yeah, it's been about three weeks. The dust has settled and I feel like we're chilling now, man. Uh, it feels great. Channel's doing great. And Bethel's doing great. All the bullshit I've been dealing with behind the scenes is also great. My dad is in good spirits, which is great. So hopefully he heals up good. But uh, yeah, everything's great for me and it feels really good. As far as my community goes, my community's been very good on Twitch. Nobody's angry at me. Everybody's pretty happy with me. Unless I play Sekiro on stream and then my chat becomes a bunch of annoying ass dipshits who live to make my life a living hell whenever I take more than one attempt on any boss and they have to say Omega oh, lol so bad go back to Genshin <laughs> yeah that's right that's right you see me you see that I'm in YouTube mode you think that y'all just disappear right I mean what'd you expect how about a good job or NT how about NT saying NT go again how about N dude if you were to say NT go again when I were to die on a boss I'd be streaming for like three hours but whenever i die one time and y'all say retard it's really it's just really hard to be a streamer and i just I, my trauma with tech Tone's twitch chat it's just it's brutal you know uh that being said i also want to talk a little bit about my gym life uh my health is now very 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 good i've been going to the gym every day for about two months now all of my lifts are going great i'm able to bench 225 uh, or rep 225 on the bench now, which I'm very excited about. I'm able to do pull-ups at 250 pounds, uh, which I'm very stoked about. And uh, yeah, all of my lifts are going really good. Uh, I'm not, I'm trying not to, I'm trying, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to like sweat too much about my weight. I really don't. But uh, I'm just, I'm getting a lot healthier and the people around me have seen that and I feel a lot better and uh, I'm, I'm just a lot happier. Uh, now let's talk about Wuthering Waves. Uh, Wuthering Waves, there's been rumors that it might come out in the next two months or so, which could be very cool. I don't know if any of these are true. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but unfortunately, I've gotten my hopes up, and uh, I think that would be very cool. I feel like the game does need some fixes, but I'll be real. Even if Wuthering Waves were to come out as it is in its current game state, I still think it would be an absolute smash hit. And I do think it would be the home to a lot of gotcha players who do want to challenge in their game, who do want to test the limits of their ability, and who do really want a game that awards people for sweating, for tryharding, for theory crafting. And I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun. I think Wuthering Waves is going to be another birth spot of a lot of newer content creators that I'm very happy about that. And I feel so fortunate that so many of these new content creators have allowed me to react to their videos uh who have been able to collaborate with me uh like eo mr pokey gotcha smack vulcan uh and also big shout outs to fob as well uh because fob made a post about me the other day and uh he felt bad about the comments he made he apologized for making the post and uh it's water under the bridge for me and fob master as well big respect for a guy because uh it, it is it is pretty much just free analytics saying tech tone bad on any forum any reddit post or any content creator and you can even get a community by just saying tech tone bad just just by merely not liking me you have a whole community so uh big big appreciation for fob for actually you know stepping up being a 
and admitting when he made a mistake and uh, attempting to move forward. And I'm glad I've been able to, uh, you know, collaborate with him. And I really respect his feedback. And I do think he is a very good content creator. I do, I do respect that a lot because it takes a big man to apologize. And I think that was very, 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 very good. Very, very, very good for him to do. But yeah, I think Wuthering Waves is going to be great. I feel like Genshin Impact is still in a shit state. I do feel like the issues with the community might be leaking over to Wuthering Waves because I am worried about the Genshin community seeking greener pastures and then treating Wuthering Waves as if it was Genshin. And then the content creators dick riding their viewers who shit on Wuthering Waves because, well, it's not Genshin, so me don't like it. And let's just be real, bro. If you're a Genshin Impact streamer, and you try to play any other game, the only thing that your chat is going to talk about is Genshin Impact. And you know that, right? So when the game comes out and your chat is toxic about it, I just really want you to try something that you may have not tried before. I want you to just try having your own opinion. And I want you to not just see what your chat is saying and agreeing with it. I really want you to speak from your heart and not just vomiting whatever you see the people on Twitter saying and vomiting whatever you see your chat saying. I do think that's going to give you a lot more longevity and not letting your chat control your life. I do think that's very important. Mint Pickers ruining another community. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the good news is, is that for people who are collectors and Wuthering Waves, at least there actually is something to collect that will actually be fun. I do think collecting streams will be very popular. Going around looking for shinies, I think those are going to be very chill vibes. I think that's going to be very, very, very good. The other thing that I really want to talk about is, and I, I probably should have talked about this earlier in the video, but a lot of people are, are, are asking me about this. Do I want to stay free to play in Honkai Star Rail? I will be real, the hardcore free-to-play community in HSR and in Genshin Impact uh, are just the cringe. It's a self-imposed challenge. It doesn't mean anything. And I will be real, nobody actually plays like that. The only people who play like that are gimmick players and content creators. Nobody ever says, I'm never going to spend a dime no matter what in these gacha games that I play due to my principles. Nobody does that. And if they do, it's like one in a hundred thousand. Okay, if, if a person spends a dollar or two, if somebody spends five dollars, if they make, if they buy a battle pass, who f cares? Now, I will be real. My experience with play, being free to play on Honkai Star Rail was a very fun one because I proved myself. I did something that nobody thought that I could actually do, and that was remain free to play and crush all content and do it easily. And I did. I beat everything. I crushed it, and it was easy. It's really not hard, and I feel like people who were praised. I feel like mother who think that they deserve to be praised for being free to play are just simply cringe. It's not hard to beat anything as free to play in a gacha game. And I'm sure if you were to go on any of these people's accounts who also do it completely free, I'm sure you could do it too. It's, it's truly not hard. It's not impressive. It's just kind of just have patience and it's really not have, it's really not hard to be patient. It's fine. Especially when you're making thousands of dollars by monetizing the content of being quote unquote free to play. I will say this in 2.1, and as of, as of right now, I am still 100% free to play. I have not spent any of the gems in my account whatsoever, which a fun fact, uh, every other, and I mean this, every other free to play streamer, including Enviasi, including MTash, and MTash has already made a video about this. Every single one of them has spent stellar jades. The ones that are put on their account, they have spent them. 1 million percent. You can check any of their VODs. You can do their calculations. You can watch the recent summon videos. They have dipped into the stellar jades. That is a fact. That is a fact. I have not yet, I have not touched any of the seller jays that are put on my account. However, that is only because I got lucky. If I did not get lucky, I would have most likely spent money. One million percent. One million percent. However, I got very, very, very lucky. So I did not, I did not spend any money yet. But if I get unlucky on Acheron summons, I most likely will. And you know what the crazy thing is? I don't care. And to be fair, I don't really think that many of you care. Now, I'm not going to be a whale. I'm never going to advocate for being a whale ever again. But I do think that I will get a copy of all the characters that I want. Because that's how I think the majority of players play. They get the character that they want. And I also like the idea of, I'm going to skip Adventurina that dog shit character, but I want to get, I want to get an Acheron. I really do. I, I don't think the majority of players would think, well, I got to stay true to the free to play challenge. So I can't get her. I don't think anybody's doing that, but I do think that people might think, 
man, I should be responsible and not get her right now because I don't have the money in real life, but I will save up for the next reroll banner. That's how I think people actually play. But do I think anybody is actually saying, oh, if I spend $5 on this game, I won't be able to live with myself? No, I really don't. And uh, to be fair, I don't really give a f about being known for being that part of the community anymore. Hey man, when I, when I, if I get unlucky on the Acheron banner, I go free to play plus, I don't care. I'll be happy. Cause you want to know why? I, I don't give a f about the gimmicks anymore, man. I just want to play Honkai Star Rail. Cause it's a game that I really, really, really love. And uh, it's my favorite gacha game right now. Now, that being said, when Wuthering Waves comes out, I will also 1 million percent be free to play until I beat all of the content in the game at the hardest difficulty while free to play. I truly don't. I truly don't. I found the clip. Wait, what's this clip? So that's why until we find out privately, you'll never find out. Even if we find out privately who this person is, we're probably just going to deal with it in private and you guys will probably never find out. It's not a creator that's close to me, so you don't need to suspect any of my friends. It's not a creator that's close to Brax, so it's it's not someone you have to worry about for Brax. And the thing is, they might not even be a creator at all, because in our overlapping circles, we have industry professionals. Okay, I don't really give a f about watching any of that shit, but regardless, if the person you're not close to at all, why'd you take their opinion, take it at face value, and then deem Brax a phone a creep, and then go behind every creator and tell him he's a creep and not to interact with him? Anyways, crazy clip. Insane, insane clip. Insane reasoning, insane scapegoat, insane pivot. And if people can't see through that bullshit, I mean, I just can't help them. Okay, I just, I just, I, you know what I mean? Like, I just, you can't help them at that point, you know? I mean, they're, they're beyond help. And then people are going to dismiss it as, oh, part of the techno community, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I don't feel like getting pivoted by that rat anymore. I don't give a f what was I talking about? What what was I what was I talking about? Oh, Wuwa. I will be free to play in Wuwa 1 million percent. Uh, until I beat all of the content at the hardest degree, I will be free to play in Wuwa. Now, that being said, after I beat it, I think I would also like to go to getting one copy of every character. And I think that's fine. And the reason why that is, is because I want to be able to relate to the people who want to see their favorite character pulled. I don't think anybody is pulling for characters at C6, Max Constellation. I think that's pointless. But I feel like people are just pulling for one copy of the characters they like, and it would make me happy knowing that people would get happy just to see the characters that they like, as well as me like, be used on the stream. I don't wanna pull for a character I don't like, because then I'm just gonna shit on that character. But if there's a character that I like and the community likes, and I might have to pay maybe like five, 10 bucks for it, I feel like I'm okay with that because I feel like that's reasonable. Now, I do think that all gacha games should be 100% enjoyed free to play, but uh, I do think my content these days is just about trying to make people happy seeing me have fun with the games that they, they like and also voicing the community concerns for the video games they want to like but are in horrible spots. And I think it would be a lot of fun just to pull for some characters. That way people can see me having fun with the thing they have fun with. And hopefully that in turn makes them have fun. That's why I like playing Sekiro and Dark Souls on stream because I know a lot of people love these games and they love watching people get their absolute ass clapped in these games just like they got their ass clapped in those games. Can someone do quick math to see how much Stellar Jades I can get in 20 days by being free to play? Uh, Stellar Jades from the past will give you like 1800 uh, regardless. That's something for the nerves to answer. Uh, is there any other questions you guys have or any other comments you guys have or any other thing that you want me to address? Because I don't want to, I don't, oh, what about ZZZ? Um, okay. Zenless Zone Zero is in a really rough spot where I do think it is going to be forgotten about due to the existence of Wuthering Waves. I will still be playing on day one just because I do want to give every new gacha game a fair opportunity that looks promising, but I just really don't think people are going to be able to get over how horrible that TV system is unless they do something absolutely insane. Now, I will say... I will play Zenless Zone Zero specifically for Nicole's big old fat boobs and also that Ghost Chick's big fat boobs. But even the point for that game is kind of ruined because it's just a bunch of furry shit, you know? Like, it's just kind of annoying. So, like, not only is the game ruined, but the ruined too because there's so much furries. I just see dogs and bears, people, and it's gross, right? Uh, yeah, any other, any other question?
Give part two Honkai Impact Third a chance. Yeah, I will also be playing Honkai Impact Third Part Two. I do also want to give that an opportunity when I have time. But you have to understand we're on a clock right now because Camp Canute is starting in April and that's going to occupy the majority of my time. That will take the majority of my time. Uh, but maybe we'll do a subathon pretty soon. HI3 Part Two sucks. Well, I guess we'll figure that out for ourselves. Uh, is there anything else? Will you ever finish Dark Souls and Iceborne? Yes, I plan on finishing both of those. Will you go back to Genji when Arlecchino comes out? Yeah, I do think I would like to explore what Arlecchino's story quest is. I do think I would like to explore what the Dane's Leaf quest is, and uh, we'll see. But if, if I don't think there's any reason for me to go back to Genji back whatsoever besides let's see what the story does and isn't that good because the content itself outside of the story is also very mid and uh, the story is at least enjoyable enough to where I like to share my experience that I was very happy with the Fontaine quest. Well, uh, uh, is there any other question or are we good to go? Golden Gear and Swarm? Yeah, we'll beat that soon. Persona 3 win? Probably whenever we do a subathon. Yeah, P3R? P3R will also happen. Uh, anyways, if you guys have any more questions, come to my twitch.tv forward slash tech tone. Just wanted to do a quick Q&A for anybody wondering about my life, what's going on, and uh, just know that I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Appreciate y'all supporting my content. Uh, my channel's doing amazing right now, and I know I couldn't be that way without you guys, so just... Uh, Thank you so much. I really like being transparent with my audience, so I always appreciate when you guys ask me questions. And uh, thank you for coming to my Twitch, and uh, appreciate the hell out of you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace, boys.